Hello, YouTube. As we all know, and as we were all disappointed with the PvE announcement earlier this Tuesday, Aaron Keller, the game director of Overwatch 2, has released an article today reflecting on the future of Overwatch 2 and addressing some of the things that were said during the reveal and to probably the greater community. And here is what he had to say. Hey, all. It's been an emotional week in the world of Overwatch. A few days ago, we talked about our change in approach to PvE in Overwatch 2 and released a high-level roadmap for the year. We're really excited for everything we'll be launching soon, but much of the discussion this week has been about how we're canceling PvE outright, which isn't accurate. So I wanted to take some time to discuss some of that with you here. When we announced Overwatch 2 in 2019, the idea for the game was centered around the PvP game we released uh, last October. And on the PvE side, story missions and hero missions. So their vision in 2019 when they announced it was PvP, but alongside PvE story missions, hero missions. That's not news. That's, but maybe the wording, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and try to dissect every little word and whatever he said. Some people are gonna be like, he wrote PVP first and wrote PVE second, the priorities. Now, basically, I guess, uh, actually the idea for the game was centered around, maybe this is a little crafty wording, but I'm not gonna like hold Aaron against that. I'm pretty sure his announcement had to go through a couple of layers as well. I'm gonna be real. I'm pretty sure Overwatch 2's idea the biggest draw was PvE. I don't think you can even sugarcoat that. Okay, maybe I will nitpick it a little bit. This may be carefully crafted to kind of like show it was kind of the whole idea alongside, but I'm gonna move on from that type, from that. Okay, so let's talk about story missions and hero missions. Story missions focused on fast-paced, co-op gameplay, as well as story, cinematics, and cutscenes that expand the world of Overwatch. Story missions tell a linear narrative about the heroes of Overwatch, reuniting and battling the new Null Sector threat, pushing the story of Overwatch forward for the first time since our original game released. These missions take place on huge maps with new enemies and new cinematics. We will begin to release them in Season 6. The work done here is amazing, leaps and bounds above what we built for PvE previously in our game, and I can't wait for our players to get their hands on them. We'll be sharing more details in the coming weeks. Now, hero missions, or the hero mode that they, I guess, advertised, on the other hand, encompassed an in-development game mode that allowed players to upgrade individual heroes through talent trees, providing a deeply replayable version of PvE in Overwatch. It was a really exciting concept, something that not only resonated with players, but that the team was passionate about and really dedicated to. This is the mode we're no longer moving forward with. To give you some context for this change, I'd like to talk about the past and the origins of Team 4. The Overwatch team was founded in the wake of a canceled game at Blizzard called Project Titan. That game had many facets, but at its heart, it was an FPS MMO. Now, before I go further, let me ask chat. Is there any game out there that is that you can categorize as an FPS MMO? Destiny? Uh, true. Uh, is Destiny really a MMO? Massive multiplayer online? Oh, I guess so. Warframe. I'm thinking MMORPG. Sorry, my brain. Okay, MMO. That That's that's true. I keep thinking MMORPG, but as long as it's massively multiplayer online and an FPS, I... I guess. So that means the Overwatch team, especially at its inception, consider itself an MMO development team. As we transitioned away from that original concept and started creating Overwatch, we included plans to one day return to that scope. We had a crawl, walk, run plan. Overwatch was the crawl, the dedicated PvE was the walk, and the MMO was the run. It was built into the DNA of the team Early on, some of us considered that the final that that final game was the true realization of the original vision of Project Titan. When we launched Overwatch in 2016, we quickly started talking about what the next iteration could be. Looking back at that moment, it's now obvious that we weren't as focused as we should have been on a game that was a runaway hit. Instead, we stayed focused on a plan that was years old. Work began on the PvE portion of the game, and we steadily continued shifting more and more of the team to work on those features. My question is, this game came out in October 2016. How soon in development? To announce it in 2019, that's three years, would it be wrong to assume they already started working on PvE like maybe like a year in. It takes like a year or two. Avril said he heard them talking about it in 2017. So I can believe this. 
that if the original plan was an FPS MMO, then like there, he's basically adding context. So Aaron is adding context to is that like Overwatch was like a spinoff from the remnants of their original plan. But once it was a hit, they still wanted to do the original idea. So like this was always in the works. So then they just piggyback off of the success of Overwatch and try to continue on with the FPS MMO. So they're already talking about in 2017. Then it does make sense that it was always on the plan. Number one, I'm going to say the biggest mistake was announcing it in 2019. I think that was too soon without any reasonable like end date in sight, like early announcements. You basically like set expectations really high early on. Then if you go dark, then people also ask questions. Like I think Cyberpunk was announced in 2013. Then it was like seven years or eight years till it came out. The biggest mistake was just saying it outright that early. Don't know. Now I, we can speculate all, all we want, whether it was Jeff's idea or higher ups or executives or Activision Blizzard, but that is a mistake to announce in 2019, period. Maybe it was further along they thought, but I think in the other uh, articles, they clarified that they, it's an iterative process and over time, they're like, it just kept evolving into something bigger and bigger and bigger. When we launched, we quickly started talking about what the next iteration could be. Oh, wow, that's basically what I just said. Looking back at the moment, it's obvious that we weren't focused as we, oh no, I did read this part. Instead, we f stayed focused on plans that was years old. Work began on the PVE portion of the game. We steadily continued shifting more and more of the team to work on those features. Things rarely go as planned in game development. We struggled to find our footing with the hero mission experience early on the scope grew we were trying to do too many things at once and we lost focus the team built some really great things including the talents enemy units early versions of missions but we were never able to bring all the elements uh, needed to ship a polished, cohesive experience. We had an exciting but gargantuan vision and we were continuously pulling resources away from the live game in an attempt to realize it. I can't help but look back on our original ambitions for Overwatch and feel like we used the slogan of Crawl, Walk, Run to continue to march forward with a strategy that just wasn't working. We had announced something audacious. Our players had high expectations for it, but we no longer felt like we could deliver it. We needed to make a, an incredibly difficult decision, one we knew that would disappoint our players, the team, and everyone looking forward to hero missions. The Overwatch team understands this deeply. This represented years of work and emotional investment. They are wonderful, incredibly talented people and truly have a passion for our game and the work that they do. People have wondered why this announcement came at this time. After Overwatch 2 had launched, we started refining our plans for future seasons. As those uh, plans grew, we tried to find ways to make all of our ambitions fit together in a plan that we believed in. We couldn't. And we also knew that we couldn't go back to pulling people away from the live game in service of that original version vision again. So we made the difficult decision to cut hero missions and started planning for the future. From there, we needed to update the vision for the game, gain confidence in our new direction, and roll out the changes to the team. The decision was a start of a long process, not the final piece of it. This has been hard for us, uh, but as a director on this project, I had to do my best to make decisions that put the game and the community first, even when those decisions are disappointing. In this case, I had trouble pivoting away from a vision that just wasn't working. And for that, I would like to apologize to our players and to our team. I'm sorry. We are focusing our efforts and our passion into making this game an ever-evolving experience. We are still committed to building many of the elements we talked about at BlizzCon 2019, including the story missions that delve into the next chapter of the Overwatch universe, new types of co-op content we haven't yet shared, and new stories that we're planning to tell uh, both in and out of the game. We're excited about this direction. We can't wait for you to finally get the experience that we've been building. Overwatch was born from the ashes of Project Titan. It was a moment of metamorphosis for the team and the project, and something beautiful came out of it. This is another moment of change, and the future of Overwatch will be born out of it. That was my first time reading that, too. I think my interpretation of this, I have a more uh, sympathetic view for uh, for this. I think the original vision, uh, like you said, was a bit too gargantuan. I think the biggest takeaway is they didn't capitalize on the success of what Overwatch was. Since Overwatch, like you said, he, he they tried to uh, still continue to work on the PvE and like the whole FPS MMO, but they didn't realize like what's in front of them. They had a game of the year and like they literally had the game of the year in front of them and they didn't prioritize that. Well, I say accident in, in a more like uh, a, a broader term, but like, you know, it wasn't their original intent. It pivoted. Did you guys know like YouTube was like a dating site and then they pivoted and then it became the success it was uh, as like a video hosting site, something like that. I still think what I said earlier with uh, the ambitious announcement in 2019 was a big mistake. A Aaron's just trying to apologize. That's fine. They are communicating. No one's ever like, uh, they are being 
transparent in this sense with what they can say, which is appreciated. Of course, uh, I am disappointed along with everybody else. I, I do. I, I was really hoping they would cast the wide net so everybody else could enjoy the larger scope of the Overwatch IP. Of course, I'm a very PvP person, uh, but I think PvE would have been a nice change of pace for me too. I would have probably thoroughly enjoyed the one aspect. Not PvE, by the way, is also not fully canceled. Um, just the hero progression thing, like the whole MMO aspect of leveling up, that was going to be exciting. And then the other big takeaway from this is that the entire PvE is not outright canceled, which is like what he was trying to clarify. That's something Something important to make a distinction they basically cut one part of their PvE product which was the hero progression mode and I made this uh, comparison to or I made this uh, this point in the previous video where in development not even game development but any sort of the dev always gets projects scrapped whether it's game or a product whether you work for a company things you work on do get scrapped but the issue was it always goes back to the 2019 announcement because you said it publicly now there's too many expectations if they never said a word about that it would never have been this uh this big of a thing because behind the scenes they scrap it they just never announce it nobody would know the wiser they should never have announced it to begin with and that is like I don't think anybody can disagree with that. The second thing that I want to point out was uh, there's a there's a point where people are saying they knew that this was they had to cut this out like six months ago, but they didn't say anything, and which means they're lying to our face and stuff like that. You have to look at it from like three lenses. As a consumer, I can sympathize. It does feel kind of like it feels disappointing or annoying to know they knew for a long time. So you have to look at it from, yeah, many different lenses as a consumer. So that's why like, I'm fine with you guys like, you know, being annoyed and disappointed, upset, blah, blah, blah. You say what you want to say. From a business perspective, it is kind of like stupid to kind of kill the, to kill the momentum. Like Overwatch 2 was trying to regain its goodwill, especially when the PVP came out in October. Season one was a success. People were playing the game. From business sense, you don't make an announcement like that right away. Like, by the way, PVE is canceled. Then what is that all for? Now people would be like, well, that's greedy. You're not transparent. I'm going to bet my in both my nut sacks that whether they said it then or now, it would still be a PR shitstorm. No matter whether they said it then and they say it now, people say they should have said it earlier. I still think the reaction wouldn't change, to be honest with you. It, it would just kind of suck that like people are stringing along and waiting in anticipation. Maybe they could have done it like maybe in like January, three months later and been a bit more candid, maybe. But that's a tough call. Because like, especially early on, like three months in, they milked in, they wanted to get more money for the battle passes. And they announced it earlier, they had less sales. That is, that's the, from the corporate POV. Uh, listen, from the corporate perspective and business perspective, that's why they did it. It definitely doesn't make sense to kill momentum and the goodwill that they're already regaining. For sure. I wish I wish we could be, you know, along with uh, all their decisions and, and, and transparent to let us know right away, but it doesn't make it right. That's actually a better way to say it. I'm saying they should have said it, but it doesn't make it right. That's that's a good way to put it. And I think this this perspective with uh, this new this new like thing can be born out of it. Being real, there is uh, they've let us down a bunch of times, like Activision Blizzard. So I'll have to see it to believe it. These are like empty words to a lot of people. To me, I it's Aaron's apology, and he seems pretty sincere here. So like that's fine by me. So now at this point. You know, it's like, okay, we just have to wait for what's next. And if it's a disappointment again, like everybody's line is a little different. Everyone's last straw. So if season six isn't a banger, that's going to be tough uh, for the IP. Now, if you want my honest, for me personally, like I'll probably still play, like I still like the PVP portion. Uh, and I mentioned this, I didn't mention this in the, I didn't mention it during this video recording, but it'll just probably just be along my, uh, like over, like, FPS rotation between Valorant and Apex. Like I'll play it for the season and then probably just chill. I think that if PvP was in a great state, people wouldn't be too mad, but that isn't the case. Yeah, PvP has also had like its fair share of issues, but I will say they are patching the game pretty frequently. I think the only biggest, the biggest like issue with PvP is the matchmaking was bad for a while and they kept having errors in, in the algorithm, having really bad matchmaking. That has been the biggest issue, but hopefully, those have been ironed out. I haven't really noticed it in the past like month, at least this season. It's been pretty fine. You can see right in the middle, the average match rank. I also stopped looking, so maybe that's affecting my, my data on that. I think looking at people's profile just like can auto tilt people, including myself. So I just I just stopped looking. I just play and focus on myself. People are still gonna be playing because they're addicted. True, like PVP will always like live on. Basically, here's this. People who are dedicated PVP players will probably play on and still be fine. You basically lose the people that quit waiting in anticipation for it and the, all the untapped potential of people who are going to play simply because of PVE and never touch the IP to begin with. You just lose the wide 
wide net that you were going to cast with like a big casual base, uh, learning about the and playing the IP. And then all the people who quit waiting for this are not going to come back at this point. Now we just wait for season six. He says PVE is not canceled. Just that one big product, one portion of it, half of it. Actually, none of us can for certain can say how big. I mean, if it's that gargantuan of a task, I'm. If I had to guess, it was probably like 75% of it. So we get like a quarter of it left. And a quarter, you can iterate off that quarter and like hopefully expand it. But that's also an arbitrary number. There's no idea. It is, they just cut a big portion of it. That's all. Battle pass through PVE though, still shitty. I don't know if they confirmed that, but that would be not sure how they're going to monetize it. That is actually another big question. I don't think it's going to be like a battle separate battle pass. I think it's just an add-on to a to a, an Overwatch season and you get the battle pass for like what you're already used to just cosmetics and uh maybe some like bonuses in the pve missions actually i find it hard to see that i think the battle passes are designed ahead of time but the one thing I, battle pass is a different topic like souvenirs i'm sorry the most useless cosmetic i've ever seen in my life that needed to be it is just a filler battle pass filler it does nothing they needed souvenirs and even emo i mean emotes are okay but they just need emotes and souvenirs to be quick and 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 cancelable but i think there are there are some competitive issues where if you use emotes you can third person peek and abuse it so i'm not sure how you tackle that problem that's why i'm not a game designer but i will say if they could have me do soldier 76 push-ups and then stop it really quickly just to like taunt somebody like people will buy stuff like that it comes down to money their projections didn't show that making pve was worth their time because if the numbers work they will hire more developers to make it happen probably in a big corporate business i'm sure you have to make like a, a budget you have to make a budget a project i mean there's a lot of layers you have to do a proposal Let's go through this layer, budgeting, shareholders. How do you monetize this business? Is it able? So you could be right in terms of like, they would hire more developers, but like how many? And the whole hiring process and getting value developers in the age of Fang and, you know, I'm not gonna get into more Activision Corpa issues, but you know, Activision does have, they made a lot of money. So that's why it's a, it's another issue of how they're distributing it and reinvesting it into the people first, but I'm, I'm just gonna leave it there. And that is all for my rambling. Peace.